now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One King! One! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Hello. Hi, Chuck. You bet I've heard the news. I'll say I heard about the new Quaker model farm. I've started building mine already. Boy, talk about fun. Listen, fellas and girls, hurry. Don't miss out. You, too, can have a swell, complete miniature model farm. Yes, you can get as many as 46 different detailed scale models in all at no extra cost. Models of farm buildings and farm animals. Yes, you can actually stock your farm with animals. Have your own short Shetland pony. What's more, these key new models are yours today without any delay. There's nothing to send in. There's no waiting. In just a few minutes, you'll hear how you can get a complete, exciting Quaker model farm for your very own. Keep listening. Jack Randall was one of many who failed in the search for gold in the Klondike. He came to Dawson and took possession of a crude shack until he could find work to provide a better home for his wife and year-old son. But hard luck dogged his trail. It was at the time of the year when the days were short. Twilight was gathering in mid-afternoon as Jack ran across the open stretch between the edge of town and the tiny cabin. Gotta hurry. Gotta get my rifle. He looked frequently over his shoulder as he ran, then rushed breathlessly into the shack. Helen, I've got to get away from here. Jack, Jack, what's the matter? It's Matson. Matson, the constable. Yes, he's after me. I'll get my rifle and clear out. But Jack, Jimmy and I... You stay here. They've got nothing on you. I'll send for you. What do you mean? Why does the law want you? Because I... I stole money from Jake Yates. You... You stole? Yes, I did. I... I lied about the cash I brought home the other day. I... I didn't earn it. I broke into the safe at Frenchies and stole the money. Jack, no. Well, it was that, or starve and see the baby starve. I should have known I couldn't get away with it. Now Matt's is coming after me. You, Jack, a thief. I... What? A dog. Stand back, Helen. Get out of the way. Jack, put down that rifle. I'm not going to let him take me prisoner. Now get back, I tell you. Jack, I... Oh, stop it. Please, Jack. Jack. Jack, look, that's not the constable. It's a mountain. He's coming to get me. Stay where you are. I got the drop on you. Hold it, King. Turn around. Go back to town or I'll shoot. Shooting me won't help you, Randall. If you shoot me, there'll be others to get you. I'm warning you. Turn back. Jack, please, Jack. You can't shoot a man. You'll hang. I'm coming for you, Randall. This is the last warning. Don't come one step nearer or I'll let you have it. Take him, King. No. No, get away. Get away. Jack, you got this one. No. Get away. Let me go. Hang on, him, King. I'll take that rifle. There. Down, King. Steady, boy. It's all right now. Thank heaven you didn't shoot. Now, Randall, you're under arrest. You... You win. I just couldn't get up the nerve to pull that trigger. Mrs. Randall, I'm sorry I frightened your baby. Oh, I'll take care of him. Oh, there, now, Jimmy. It's all right. I... I thought it would be Madsen who'd come to get me. He's still in Whitehorse. Oh. I heard about you, so I came ahead of Madsen. I see. Frenchy didn't want to arrest you, but... Matson talked him into filing charges. Frenchy, he didn't want to arrest me? No. He knew you'd had hard luck, and he wanted to give you a chance to find a job and repay the money, but Matson wouldn't listen to that. Matson, that dirty ornery... Matson no... is not a member of the Northwest Mounted Police, Jack. He'd like to be. He's trying to make a record for himself. He's tried to build you up as a ruthless, murderous criminal, a fugitive from justice in the States. Well, that's not true. 
Jack's never done a thing in his life that was wrong until... Until my wife and boy were hungry. Now listen to me, Randall. I know Matson. I know his type. He's planning to come here to take you prisoner. And he's hoping you'll resist. So I'll have an excuse to shoot you. No, no! I know that's what he'd do. And I wouldn't even have to try to resist. He'd shoot me and say I resisted. That's why I was ready to shoot Matson. Then head south for the border. And be a hunted man for the rest of your life? No, Randall, that's not the answer. Now listen to me. Frenchie will give your wife a job in his store. She can wait for you to finish a jail trial. I won't go to jail. Yes, I... you will. You'll pay for what you've done so you can face the world. Take my word for it, Jack. You'll be happier. Sergeant Preston you. talked as a friendly counselor, and he talked convincingly, persuading Jack Randall to submit to arrest and face trial. There was something about the strong-faced Mountie that gave young Randall courage to accept a three-year term in prison without flinching. He served his time in full. Five years later, he was a trusted employee in the bank in Whitehorse and a respected member of the community. Apparently, no one knew about his unfortunate affair in Dawson. Not even his employer, Mr. Gregory, who owned the bank. Well, the clerk said you wanted to speak to me, Mr. Gregory. Oh, yes. Yes, Randall. Uh, come in. I've just closed up the bank, locked the front door. Well, first of all, Randall, I want you to know that I am well pleased with the work you've been doing. Oh, thank you, sir. I like your work, and I like your habits. My my habits? <laughs> I've been keeping a close watch on you, my boy. Maybe you didn't suspect it, but I've watched you. If I'd seen you hobnobbing with Candy Lonigan or any of the gambling crowd that hang around his cafe, I, I wouldn't have liked it. Uh, how does your wife feel about living here in Torres? Oh, she likes it a lot. And uh, how about your son? He likes it, too. <laughs> how old is he now? Oh, Jimmy's just six. Today's his birthday. <laughs> That's what I thought. As soon as I get home, we're going to celebrate. We have a cake with six candles on it. Fine, and... fine. Now, I don't want to detain you. I just wanted to uh, give you something for the boy. Here it is. Why, a $20 gold piece. Yep. Oh, gosh, thanks, Mr. Gregory. I'll take this home to Jimmy and show it to him. Then bring it back tomorrow and use it to start a bank account in Jimmy's name. I was... What's the matter? I... I just saw that man looking in the window. I saw him. He's been around town for several days. His name is Matson. Matson? I think he's some kind of a special lawman. Oh, yeah. Yes, I... I know him. Does he want you, Jack? Well, no, no, he, he doesn't. Oh, good. <laughs> well, now get along home. <laughs> Jimmy's waiting for his birthday cake. Yes, sir. You can go out the back way. It'll save unlocking the front door. All right. Good evening, Mr. Gregory. Goodbye. Hello there, Randall. Remember me? Yes, Matson. I remember you. It's been a long time. It's about five years since I saw you in court. You were pretty disappointed, Matson. You didn't get far when you tried to blame me for a lot of other crimes. Did you do the full stretch? Yes, I did. No, I didn't know. I left Dawson soon after you went to jail. Yes, Sergeant Preston told me you left town. So you did your stretch, and you came back here and settled down to a new life, huh? What about it? Does your boss know you spent three years in jail for robbing a safe? Now, see here, Matson. <laughs> oh, <laughs> He doesn't know it, huh? I didn't think so. What about it? Well, you were probably smart not to tell him. Gregory's not the kind of a man to trust the next crook in his bank. Matson, get this straight. If you try to make any trouble for me... Oh, forget it. Calm down, Jack. I don't want to make any trouble. What if this is a shakedown? Now, whatever gave you that idea? I wouldn't want to spoil things for you, Jack. There's no reason why the two of us can't be friends. I gotta go along. My folks are waiting. Well, there's something I gotta talk about. It'll have to wait. I can't wait, Jack. I'm still a lawman, you know. No, I... I didn't know. Well, I am. And I'm here on a sort of a special assignment. I need your help. I'm in a hurry. Oh, you don't want to be in a hurry, Jack. Look. Lots of things can happen when a fellow hurries. For example, I know a gent who lost a darn good job when his boss learned that he was an ex-crook. Why, you... <laughs> now, let's go somewhere and talk for a spell, hmm? Come on over to Candy Lonigan's cafe. Jack Randall decided it would be wise to accompany Matson to the cafe and hear what he proposed. He didn't know that on that day of all days, Sergeant Preston and the great dog King were waiting at his home. 
Jack should be home, Sergeant Preston. He should have been here some time ago. I can't imagine what's delayed him. You may have had to work overtime, Ellen. Oh, that must be it. I'm sorry. I wanted to see him. Oh, can't you wait a little longer? The man I'm to meet at the falls will be waiting. I've already stayed longer than I should have. It would have meant so much to Jack to have you with us when we have Jimmy's birthday cake. I'll come back here, Helen, before I leave the community. Oh, will you? Yes, probably late tomorrow. Oh, Mommy, nice dog. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy and King have become good friends. King likes children. I have an idea, Helen. I'll leave King here until I return. Oh, would you? Why not? I'll not need him. The rest will do him good. And Jimmy can play with King. him. King! <laughs> going to leave you here, fella. Now you behave yourself. I'll be back tomorrow. King didn't want to be left behind, but he was made to understand that he had no choice in the matter. He watched quietly as his master left the house, then lay on the floor near the door and permitted the six-year-old boy to fondle his luxurious coat and scramble on his back. It was dark outside when suddenly the dog leaped up. Someone was coming. He caught the scent of a man he knew. Daddy! Daddy! Oh, Jack, you're late. That door. Oh, Jack, it's King. It's Sergeant Preston's door. Oh, nice dog. Sergeant Preston? Well, he waited as long as he could. Then he had to leave to meet someone at the falls. But he'll be back tomorrow, Jack. Daddy, no, you light the candles on my birthday cake? Helen, I... I've got to go out again. Right away. Oh, no, Jack. The birthday. Daddy, my cake with candles on oh, it. Listen, son. Daddy's in a mighty big hurry. We... We will have to wait until later for that birthday cake. Jack, what's the matter? What's happened? Oh, don't worry, Helen. Everything will be all right. Where's that dark hat of mine? Oh, it's there in the cupboard. Oh, is, is this something you brought for Jimmy? Put that down! <gasps> oh, you dropped it. Daddy, what's this? Give that to me. Hey, Jack, this is blasting powder and fuse. Helen, listen. Matson is here in Whitehorse. You remember Matson? Oh, yes. He's a special investigator of some kind, and... He's trying to get evidence against Candy Lonergan. Oh, he runs the cafe. Matson wants some papers that are in Lonergan's safe, and, and I've got to get them for him. And I've got to hurry while Candy's not around. You mean you're going to break into Lonergan's safe? Yes. Oh, no, Jack. It's all right, Helen. I'm on the side of the law. I've got to help Matson. If I don't, he... He'll tell Mr. Gregory and everyone else about my past. Well, let him. You pay for your one mistake. Yeah, but I'd lose my job. I'd lose all I've worked for. But Jack... Oh, Jack, please. Wait. I've got to hurry. Jimmy's been waiting so long, and, and there's a friend to see me. I'll be back in an hour or so. Let Jimmy take a nap. We'll have his birthday when I get back. <laughs> Mommy, why did Daddy leave? <gasps> oh, Jimmy, I wish I knew. I wish I knew. <laughs> We'll continue our story in just a moment. Fellas and girls, listen. <laughs> Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice are offering you a complete new miniature model farm. Boy, you get swell models right on all new packages. Yes, anyone can build these exciting models of farm buildings, equipment, and animals simply by getting new packages of Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. You get as many as 16 models on a single package. And there are eight different packages. With 46 detailed scale models in all. And say, they don't cost a single extra penny. Just look at all the models on package number one alone. You get your own farmhouse and your own model watchdog. <laughs> That's Queenie the Collie. Other models are, well, there's Dobbin the Horse and Bossy the Cow. Oh, and you get a garage and, and pickup truck. What's more, these models are easy to build. All packages are pre-cut and scored. Assembling is a cinch. No paste or glue is necessary. Gee, look at that big red barn on package number three. It's got a sliding door. Other farm buildings have windows and doors that open and close. What fun you'll have with this Quaker model farm. Best of all, you can start building these models right away. There's no waiting, nothing to send in. All you do is get the new model farm packages of Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. Wheat or rice shot from guns is my favorite cereal. What could be better? These models now come right on the packages. Remember, there are eight different packages, 46 swell models in all, and they come only with Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So get busy. Start your Quaker model farm right away. It couldn't be easier. There's no waiting, no extra cost. Simply go to your grocer. He now has Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice with these swell new models. 
Hurry, they're waiting for you. Now to continue our story. Sergeant Preston had left the great dog King in the home of Jack and Helen Randall until he returned from a meeting. King stood watching Helen sob as though her heart would break after Jack had left the house with the announcement that he had to blow open the safe in Candy Lonergan's cafe. The big dog had been trained to meet almost any situation, but a woman's tears bewildered him. Mommy, please don't cry. All right. I, I'll not cry anymore, Sonny. There now. Mother's all through crying. Only Sergeant Preston hadn't left. At the mention of his master's name, King whimpered softly. Sergeant Preston would have known what to do. I, I'm i sure he'd have told Jack not to do this thing. <laughs> Moved by a feeling of sympathy, King rested his powerful jaws on the knee of the unhappy woman. King. Oh, King, if you could only get your master back here. I, I do want to talk to him. King barked at the door to register his desire to go after Sergeant Preston. The act gave Helen an idea. King, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to fasten a message to your harness. That's what I'll do. Mommy, wait, help. Jimmy. Just wait till Mother writes a short note. Then I'll be with you. The worried woman scribbled an urgent message to Sergeant Preston, then fastened it to the harness of the great dog, King. Now, King, go. Go and find your master. Go to Sergeant Preston. And God speed you. The Mountie was well on his way to the community known as the Falls to meet a man with whom he had an appointment. He was pushing through the early evening moonlight when he heard a distant bark. It sounded familiar. Oh, sounds like King. It is King. Hey, boy. What's this mean? What are you doing here? I told you to stay with Mrs. Randall and Jimmy. Hold on now. Stop tugging like that. Oh, what's this? A note? The Mountie unfolded the note. Then, using his parka as a windbreak, he struck a match to read the urgent message. One word caught his eye. Matt's... King barked a response to his master's reaction. King, boy, I've been traveling in the wrong direction. Get going, fellow. We're hitting the back trail, and we're traveling fast. King raced along the back trail, running ahead of Sergeant Preston and stopping frequently to turn and back, as if to urge the master to greater speed. I'm with you, King. Keep going, boy. The great dog went directly to the home of Helen Randall and jumped and barked before the door. King, you're back. He brought me with him, Mrs. Randall. Oh, oh, Sergeant Preston, thank goodness you're here. I read your note. You spoke of a man named Matson. Oh, yes. I, I'm nearly beside myself with worry. I didn't know what to do. You see, my husband Jack came home, but he couldn't stay for Jimmy's birthday cake. He had to leave in a hurry. Because of Matson? Yes. You said something about opening a safe. It's the one in Mr. Lonigan's office. I don't want Jack to do it. Even if he is working for a lawman, he shouldn't open a safe. That's what got him into so much trouble before. I'll go to Lonigan's place right away. Oh, but just a minute, Sergeant Preston. The safe is not in Lan Lonigan's cafe. No? It's in another building. Lonigan has two buildings. They're connected by a covered walk. His office is in the smaller one, and that's where he has his money in his safe. All right, Mrs. Randall. Thanks for the information. Come on, King. Hurry, Sergeant Preston, hurry. The small building that served Candy Lonergan as an office was quite dark. The only light came from the moon that shone through a single window that Jack Randall had left open when he entered the room. Cold air streamed in. But despite this, Jack's face as he worked before the iron safe was beaded with perspiration. Uh, now to get the fuse in place. It's a good thing I'm working on the side of the law. Helen will understand everything when I have time to explain. Now to light the fuse. Randall touched a match to the short length of fuse and watched it burn for a moment, then took refuge behind a heavy desk. Sergeant Preston was at the rear of the cafe when he heard the explosion. A blast lighted up the building that served as Lonergan's office at the end of the covered walk. Close on the heels of the blast, two gunshots sounded. One came... A number of men, including the constable who had been in the cafe, rushed through the long corridor toward the office. They saw Matson at the end of the corridor near the office door. Boy, boy, come here, Matt. 
What is it? What's happened? I heard an explosion. What's going on? I'm going to get the constable. Get Lanigan. Get them both here fast. I'm right here, Matson. So is the constable. What happened in my office? Lanigan, I was looking for you. I thought you'd be in your office. What's the gunplay mean? I got here just outside the office door. Then I heard an explosion. I heard it. We all heard the explosion. Sure. What was it? There's gunshots Quiet. too. I heard Let Matson tell his story. Go on, you. Well, I snatched open the door. The room was dark and filled with smoke. Then someone fired a shot. Just missed me. I jerked out my gun and I fired back. Well, I guess I got the man. He fell he's right there. You, Joe? Yeah? Get a lamp going in the office. I'll right. see what I can find. You got a gun, Matson? Yeah, here. One shot fired. Constable, look here. Come right in, Constable. Whoa, whoa. Sergeant Preston. That's right. Hey, Preston, where'd you come from? Hello, Matson. Oh, where did... King and I came through that open window. We were just a little way off when we heard the blast and gunshots. Quiet, King. Put the lamp right there, Joe. All right. And get a couple of others going. We've got to see how hard hit this man is. He's alive. You'll recognize him, Constable. You too, Lonigan. Well, a great day. It's Jack Randall. Turn safe, Cracker. Let me at him. He tried to kill me. Get that dog back. Stay where you are, Matson. Randall, a thief? I, I can't believe it. Well, there's the evidence, Lonigan. Safe blown open, Randall on the floor, and his gun right beside him. How long have you been here, Sergeant Preston? Just a minute ahead of you. Matson was shooting when I came through the window. Randall's always been a crook. He did a term three years in Dawson. What makes you want Sure, that's right. And you can prove it by checking the records. Before that, he was wanted for a lot of other crimes. Matson, you know that's a lie. It is not. It's a truth. When Randall was on trial at Dawson, you tried to pin a number of other crimes on him and failed. Uh, what's going on here? It's Gregory. Hey, it's a banker. Come in, Gregory. Uh, that's Jack Randall on the floor. I'm fixing his wound, Mr. Gregory. Just grazed for the bullet. You ought to hang for trying to kill me. Sergeant Preston, is that true? I doubt it. You doubt it? I don't see how you can doubt it, Sergeant Preston. The evidence is here before our eyes. The open safe, Matson's story. I saw Randall at the safe. There. I think that bandage will do for the time being. And there's Randall's gun right beside him on the floor. Preston, I hired that man on your recommendation. If he's proved to be a thief... I had a lot of paper money loose in this safe. It's gone. Oh, it is, huh? Well, I guess Randall can tell where it is. Let's wait until he regains consciousness and see what he has to say for himself. And in the meantime, it wouldn't hurt to go through his pockets and see if he has Candy Lonergan's cash. Very well, Matson. Be sure you search him thoroughly, Sergeant Preston. I'm watching you close. Uh oh. Hey, there you are. Look what the Mounties found. Hey, what's money. <laughs> Fallen money. Here's the evidence. Now, what do you say, Preston? Oh. He's regaining consciousness. Oh, I. I can't believe that he's a thief. Well, he is. And the chances are he figured on cracking the safe in your bank soon as he had the right chance. Oh, what? What? Heck? Take it easy, Jack. You, Sergeant Preston. <laughs> King. Don't try to talk until you're ready. What, what happened? You know what happened. You're caught cracking the safe and I shot you. I wish I'd have killed you, you thieving polecat. Matt. Oh, you can't lie yourself out of this job. Lie? Wait a minute, Matson. What are you saying? <laughs> We're all waiting to hear what you got to say. Go on, start your life. Here, Jack, I'll help you sit up. Oh, thanks. Oh, Matson, he, he told me to come here to smash that safe. Oh, oh listen to him. Be quiet, Matson. Oh, you did, Matson. You you threatened to tell... Oh, Mr. Gregory. Tell your story, Jack. Mr. Gregory, I... I did a term in jail before I came to Whitehorse. I knew that, Jack. Sergeant Preston told me all about that before I hired you at my bank. You, you knew it. Of course. Any man can make a mistake. But tell me, Jack, did you make the same mistake a second time? Did you come here and smash that safe? Oh, yes. Matson told me he had to get evidence. He said that he was a special lawman. He threatened to go to you, Mr. Gregory, and tell you I'd been in prison if I didn't help him. Well, that's a mighty fancy lie, Randall. Me, a lawman. Oh, that's funny. I haven't been a lawman since just after your trial in Dawson. Jack, what happened just after the explosion? The door opened. Matson came in. Go on. Matson shot at me. That's all I know. That was after you shot at me. I, I didn't shoot. I, I couldn't. I didn't have a gun. A liar? I tell you, I didn't have a gun. How about the gun on the floor where you were lying? I, I don't know. And how about the cash we found in your pocket? Cash? Handy Lonigan's cash from his safe. I have something to say about this cash. There's just $200 here. I'm sure Lonigan had more than that. I sure did. Maybe it's yeah. in this room. Maybe we can find the rest of the money. How? How will you do it? You mean search us all? I don't think it'll be necessary to search anyone. All the cash in the safe is close to the explosion of the blasting powder. It'll have a strong scent of burnt powder. King should be able to help. Here, King. Get the scent, boy. Just what sort of a trick are you trying to pull, Preston? You'll find out, Matson, in just a minute. I 
I told the truth. I believe you, Jack. Now, let's see what King can do. Go on, King. Find it. King, with the scent of gunpowder and paper money in his nostrils, moved from one man to another in the crowded room, while every man watched, tense and wondering. Then the great dog moved to Matson. Suddenly he made a leap. No! No! Matson's gone! King's fangs closed on Matson's pocket. Get away from me! There was a ripping of cloth, the pocket tore loose, and a bundle of paper money dropped to the floor. Money! Look at it! There you are. Pressing out till you... Matson snatched a gun from an inside pocket, and King leaped at the gun. Hand. The shot went wild, then Preston charged. That'll do! Here's another! Stop! Got him, King. Take that dog away. Get him off of me. On guard, King. Down, boy. On guard. Gosh, Sergeant. He brought that gun out so fast, he, he might have gotten here. King hadn't jumped him. So you had another gun, eh, Matson? You came here well armed. You fired one gun at Randall, then you fired another and threw it to the floor at Randall's side. You had a third, a sneak gun. And I'll take that one. Why, you... you must have moved fast. After the safe was blown open, you shot twice, then grabbed cash in the safe, put some into Jack's pocket, and the rest into your own. Then you went to the door and shouted. I got nothing to say. That doesn't matter. A jury will decide your guilt. That dog hadn't been here. We'd have caught up with you sooner or later, Matson. I was on the way to the falls to meet a man who could tell me where to find you when King came with a message saying you were here in Whitehorse. You you were looking for Matson? Yes, Jack. For impersonating a member of the Northwest Mounted Police. But now we have him on another charge. Charge of robbery and attempted murder. (laughs) Gosh. King captured me five years ago. Now he's saved my neck. Take charge of Madsen, Constable. Right, Sergeant. I'll help Jack home. His wife and son are waiting for him. (laughs) You too, King. Thanks to you, old boy, we're going to a birthday party. And the case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Don't forget, get special new model farm packages of Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice pronto. They're at your grocer's now. Think of it, you can actually get 46 colorful models of farm buildings, farm equipment, and farm animals. These exciting, easily assembled models come on eight different packages, and they're yours at no extra cost. Don't miss out. Start building yourself a model farm right away. And don't forget... These exciting models come only with delicious Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice. They're waiting for you now on your grocer's shelves. So hurry. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle and directed by Fred Flowerday. This story was written by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Skagway Patrol. It isn't very often that a member of the force works out of uniform, but it was necessary the time the Major sent me down to Skagway. Skagway is an American territory... And it was my mission to get a line on the criminals who were coming into the town. For a while, King and I were actually members of Soapy Smith's gang. Until they found out who we were. And from then on, we were fighting for our lives. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Friday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.